Let's talk about gentleness. What picture comes to mind when you think of gentleness? Is it a little baby? Is it a butterfly playing with a kitten on a cloud of marshmallows? Well, I'm not sure what you're thinking about, but in just a moment, I'm going to share with you what comes to my mind. But before we get there, let's talk about what gentleness means. You could say that gentleness is showing love and care in a calm way. Or a better way might even be to say it's showing love instead of anger. Now, the picture in my mind, as I think of gentleness, is this huge, powerful elephant calmly painting a beautiful picture. I haven't been around a bunch of elephants in my life, but it really doesn't take much to recognize how incredibly strong they are. In fact, elephants are some of the most powerful animals on the planet, and they have the ability to destroy things very quickly if they want to. They can uproot trees or break them in half without doing much at all. And, and forget about a car. If you have a tractor stuck in the mud, wow, you can just get an elephant and it'll pull it right out there for you. Elephants can destroy buildings, and if you've ever seen an elephant go wild in a city, then you know they can cause a whole lot of destruction in a pretty short time. But even with all that power, some elephants have actually learned how to take a delicate brush and paint wonderful art. The reason that this makes me think of gentleness is because gentleness is not weak or powerless in any way. I wouldn't call an ant gentle just because it can't push me. I would just say it's too weak to move me. Real gentleness is having incredible power, but choosing to use it in a loving and caring way. And let's go a step further. It's easy to be kind and loving towards others when they're loving to me. Maybe you have a best friend or someone that you enjoy spending time with. And maybe someone who is generous, who gives nice things to you, cares for you, or is always willing to help you when you need it. With people like that, it's, it's really a whole lot easier to be loving and, and grateful and kind to them. But that's not really gentleness either. We have to think about the people who aren't so nice. I want you to take a moment right now and think about somebody that maybe rubs you the wrong way. You, you know who I'm talking about. Someone who makes you angry or frustrated more times than you can count. How do you react to that person when they don't treat you right? Gentleness is responding with love in that moment. If you wanna be a great leader, or if you wanna be an influencer that makes a difference in this world, then it makes sense to look at the greatest influencer of all time, Jesus Christ. And guess what? He happens to be the best example of gentleness that the world has ever seen. Let's look at what the Bible tells us. It says, no one is really willing to die for an honest person, though someone might be willing to die for a truly good person. But God showed how much he loved us by having Christ die for us, even though we were sinful. So God showed the greatest act of love to die for somebody when we were still sinners. We weren't doing good. We weren't doing the right thing. We were sinners and God hates sin. It hurts him and it hurts the people that he loves deeply. So God says that he died for us when we were still sinful. And that means that he was showing great love when anyone else would have been angry. The pictures that God gives us about how he views us even though we've sinned is really mind blowing. He talks about how he sings over us, how he runs to us, how he hugs us and how he heals us and cleans us. It's not because of how great you or I am. It's because of how great he is and how great his love is, is bigger than the destruction that we deserve. And he chose to suffer so that we can be healed. That is gentleness. And Jesus says that he wants you and I to be gentle also. Philippians 4, 5 says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And when it says, let it be evident to all, it's saying, I want everyone to know that you are gentle. Look, I don't want to be known as a mean person or an angry person. I don't want to be known as a bully or someone that's always forcing his way to get what he wants. No one likes to be around someone like that. And no one wants to follow someone like that. I want to be known for being gentle. And that takes humility. It means that I'm going to treat others as if they're more important than me. And maybe I'm not going to get what I want right now, but I'm going to be patient. I'm going to trust that God still cares about me and that he knows what I need. And I'm going to choose to be gentle and I'll let God do what he wants to do in my life in his time. Okay, 
Now think of that person that bothers you. I want you to think of whatever or whoever really grinds your gears and makes you frustrated. Now, my challenge for you this week is to think about one or two things that you can do when you get frustrated or angry. Instead of responding with anger, think of how you can respond with love and gentleness. Maybe you want to take a, a deep breath and say a simple prayer like, God, I'm really frustrated and I'm angry. Would you help me to be gentle right now? Or maybe you want to memorize a verse and say it in that moment. Oh, okay, this is really frustrating. Philippians 4, 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God, you're with me. Thank you. Whatever it is that you want to try, I pray that as you trust God and do this, that you'll experience more of God's love in your life as you demonstrate gentleness to others. So keep fueling yourself with God's love and truth, and I'll see you next time.